Las Vegas is known as the entertainment capital of the world, but how did she earn her distinct title? Joining me today to discuss some of the most pivotal historical moments is a panel who hold the keys to much of the unknown. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. Thank to you. my right, I'd like to introduce <coughs> the one and only, Miss Lucille Bryant. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've known you most of my life. Amen. I've yeah. known you all. Of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And next to her is Miss Brenda Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Jackie Brantley. And Miss Hannah Brown. Thank you for inviting me. And the one who is so brave to be here, yeah. Mr. Dave Washington. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I can't, I couldn't figure out how to begin this discussion with all this historical information. All of you not only have family with history uh, in this city, but all of you hold history of your, in your own right. Um, I just figured the best way to start is just in from the beginning. Uh, as far as we can go back, not from what we've read, but what we've truly known in our own homes. Mm -hmm. And Jackie, I think your family pretty much is the first ones uh, can we could trace back to the 30s. Yes. Uh, yeah, and right. your family it was here since the 30s. Can you tell us just a little bit of how, when they came? Oh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Henry Moody, my mother, Susie Moody Parker, and my uncle, Herman Moody, they came from Mississippi, from Mississippi to um, Arizona, mm -hmm. and then from Arizona to Las Vegas. This was in 1939. Wow. And it was in the fall of 1939. And I've heard this story many times from my mother, from my uncle, and from my grandfather. There was very little here. But they actually slept in the car the mm -hmm. first night uh, when, they when they arrived in Las Vegas because there were, there were no motels or hotels where they could, you know, rent a room for the night but they did know of friends or individuals who had come to Las Vegas before them who lived here in the area and it was all centralized what we know as downtown Las Vegas off of Fremont, uh, Fremont. between Fremont uh, and Bonanza between Maine and Fifth mm -hmm. that was the area where most of their friends lived and owned property when right, they arrived right. there. They were surprised. So to there see was there was mostly blacks downtown. Blacks there. Yes, and That's they owned they, the property. Right. Some of them had uh, their own homes, and I think there were a couple of establishments. And the very first night, uh, well, they stopped here because they were on their way to Oregon because my grandfather wanted to find work there, and some friends had told him that there was uh, work there. And um, as my uncle would say, uh, it was quite a lonely night because uh, they didn't know what to expect the next day. But the people that they uh, interacted with that mm -hmm. night were so warm and so cordial that they suddenly just knew or felt that they were home. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather was able to get a job at uh, working for the Binions. Uh, the uh -huh. next day, as a matter of fact, uh -huh. and uh, the rest is history. Right. Well, th at history. the time, though, that's when Hoover Dam had just been completed. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, many, many of the blacks that came here to work on the dam, the first two years, from uh, what I've learned, is they they weren't hiring blacks mm -hmm. uh, because you know at the time the whole country was in a, a great depression, and so they wanted to hire mostly the whites, and they were had you know, they were doctors, lawyers working. So in, in your, so everyone was downtown at the time. They owned businesses. Does anyone else know of any uh, of your family members or friends who own businesses downtown? No, no I don't, don't know. I came later. So basically, mm -hmm. Jackie, your family's downtown. So then here comes the uh, segregation because of the dam uh, and all the white visitors, right? So they had right. to remove them from downtown. Right, well actually, um, from conversations as a, as a child just listening to the elders speak about Las Vegas, uh, it was, was almost like uh, listening to folk tales mm -hmm. because someone would inter, in, in, interject something, someone else would have a different point of view. Uh, and when you get three people, there are three points of views. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But I remember names like the Burdines yeah. mm -hmm. who were here, mm -hmm. the Harrises that mm -hmm. were already mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Uh, there was a church that was already here, mm -hmm. um, and that church became later Zion Methodist Church. 
-hmm. but um, there were so many individuals who mm -hmm. uh, they now have thousands and thousands of family members now right but the root was the Harris's um, the Christensen's, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, they came here later, uh, but uh, uh, Hannah will probably be able to fill in a lot of details as Brenda also and Mrs. Bryant, that m many of these people, people, they came from Arkansas, they came from Louisiana, <coughs> they came mm -hmm. from Mississippi, mm -hmm. but they came from some of the best stock because they had cur insurmountable courage. Mm -hmm. Just think, a black family moving mm -hmm. 100 miles to the west. Right. A hundred, right. and my grandfather was a little tiny little man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he had such respect mm -hmm. for other people. And as a child growing up, he would always refer to someone else as Mr. Mm -hmm. So and so, or Miss So and so. And I knew he, your grandfather, so I know. Yeah, I knew your your whole family. That's right. He yeah. would expect <laughs> yeah. the same respect back to him. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. how we were raised, right. and I'm so, so, I'm so yeah. proud of that. <clears throat> so we can oh, fast yeah. forward here. So then the dam comes, all of these tourists are coming. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh-oh, we got to get these blacks out of downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we fast forward here, a little couple more years later, we find ourselves all on one side of town. Yeah, then which is the west side. Which is referred to the west, west side. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when most of you mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. coming. So Miss mm -hmm. Bryant, can you tell me when you first came here was back in 1953. 53. 53. Yes, I came here from Tallulah, Louisiana in 1953. And uh, I came here on a Saturday morning. Uh, we, we motored here. At that time, we were coming in cars and sometimes catching the buses. But we came in a car. It took you three days, three nights to get here in that car. Mm -hmm. I got here about 6 o'clock that morning. And when I got here, my cousin, her name is Gladys Smith. Some of you know her. She was working at the Algiers Hotel, but she was quitting the job at the Algiers Hotel. And she told me, come and go with me. I'm going to pick up my check. And maybe you can get hired out there. So I came along with her to the Algiers Hotel, and she got her check, and then I asked the lady if she needed someone else to work. And she said, yes, she could. She used another person to work. So then she took me upstairs, the housekeeper, at the Algiers Hotel, <laughs> and she showed me what I had to do uh, to do eight beds and eight bathrooms, and she would give me eight dollars a day. <laughs> okay, oh. big money. Yeah. <laughs> big money. But that big was money. a lot because in the South, how much were yeah. they earning a week? Oh, yeah. That was almost I a week, I worked right? a whole domestic week day. doing domestic yeah. work for yeah. five dollars. Okay. Oh. So really? Eight dollars a day mm -hmm. was right. more money than I had ever made. And then yeah. in the cotton field, mm -hmm. in the cotton field, if you were chopping cotton, you maybe you got two dollars a day for chopping cotton or three dollars a day from chocolate cotton and that was mm -hmm. all day long. And sometimes from they didn't pay you, right? Sundown. And sometimes and they Bahrain, wouldn't pay. You didn't get that. Right, you right, did not right, get that. Right. And if you were picking cotton, same thing. Two dollars for if you pick a hundred pounds and sometimes it went up to three dollars mm -hmm. if you picked a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. So you got to mm -hmm. pick two hundred pounds to get four or six dollars, you know. Wow. So when she said, Eight dollars <laughs> a day. My <laughs> God, you I had never made that much money before in all my life. So when you got your first check, what did what happened? Oh I mean, you my God! Let me tell you before I got that check. <laughs> before I got when she told me what I was making, and then she went on back downstairs so I could start working. But the first thing I did, Trish, I got on my knees on that mm -hmm. bed, okay. lift my hands to heaven, and mm -hmm. gave oh God, God thanks. Okay. Eight dollars no. a day right. yeah. and working in the shade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not out there in the hot sun, <laughs> yeah. working yeah. in the shade. Okay. And the Absolutely first right. check yeah. I got. I rode back home and said, everybody, come on out here. Uh, <laughs> they gone crazy. <laughs> they give away money. Give it away, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Eight dollars a day. And that was, yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 Yes, and, uh -huh. and that was but such a tradition. My relatives start coming out here like in 43, 42, something like that. Uh -huh. Because they came when, uh, you know, the wall started and the defense plants were open and everything. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. of course, who would damn it? They, f they found out it was you could make more money out here. Right, so right. they started coming here mm -hmm. earlier than I did. Mm -hmm. And at the time when they first started coming here, you know, they could buy a ticket and get on the bus and everything and come on out here. But 
they start leaving Louisiana so fast, <laughs> they stopped selling tickets to them. Oh, they, really? Oh, my yeah, goodness. They stopped really? selling them tickets. Really? And really? they had to start slipping away uh -huh. at night, oh way in God. the midnight. Yeah. They would hard, start to slip away driving cars and things, or go to Monroe, Louisiana, and get uh, a, a ticket to come on yeah. out here mm -hmm. because everybody was leaving <laughs> in such a hurry until they didn't <laughs> want all they their labor to, to pick leave. Their cotton. Yeah. Okay. So they had to slip <laughs> off mm -hmm. and leave yeah. to what, come were, here. Were a lot of the yeah. sawmill plants closing up anyway? N the one in Louisiana was not closing no. at that time. Uh -huh. Later on, uh -huh. they had to close. Uh -huh. Yeah, in about five years, mm -hmm. they had to close because mm -hmm. everybody yeah. was gone. It was gone. Yeah. Everybody was gone. And Jackie was talking about the ch <laughs> the church, the Zion Methodist right. Church. We are the oldest mm -hmm. black church mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Right. We were organized in 1917. Wow. At that time, as she said, everybody was living downtown and everything. And most of the blacks went to church at First Methodist Church downtown. but with the white congregation. Mm -hmm. But then a handful of people decided, we want a church of our own mm -hmm. where we can worship mm -hmm. the way we want to worship, you know. Mm -hmm. And they petitioned the Union Pacific Railroad and they gave them a little parcel of land. Mm -hmm. That land was on the corner of Casino Center and Ogden. You know where the mm -hmm. Benjamin, you yep. talk yes, about sir. Benjamin, yeah, see, where yeah. Benjamin Horseshoe Club mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and you know that <coughs> horse that used to be standing there? Mm -hmm. That's where our first little church mm -hmm. stood, oh, right yeah. there on that piece of land. And somebody <coughs> gave them a building, a little small building, they put it there. But like you said, when they had to, everybody started coming this way. Mm -hmm. Now we got to get them out of down from downtown mm -hmm. and put them on the place they would let us go, okay. West Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So we moved from downtown in 1946, came to West Las Vegas, and we built a church on G and Washington. Mm -hmm. Later we mm -hmm. moved, as everybody knows, 2108 North Revere Street. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but those were the early days. That's that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. interesting to, to mm -hmm. hear, you know, the, you know, the reasons why everyone came here. Mm -hmm. And because uh, the first time many of them that came for the dam, after the dam was completed, they had vacancy laws and they wanted actually a lot of the blacks to be out of here, to get mm -hmm. rid of them. They even had mm -hmm. chain gangs. Uh -huh. But then when the war started, the basic magnesium plant attracted a lot more. Right. That's where my yeah. 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 So th and so yeah. that's where your family yes, comes in. Exactly. For uh, <coughs> my grandfather, I guess, must have come in 1940, uh, and I know that uh, I, he came to work at Basic Magnesium Plant, and subsequently uh, he got my mom interested in going to work at Basic Magnesium. My mother applied, and they told her. Uh, that she was hired and they gave her a broom. My mother was Juanita Smith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my mother said she did not come from Arkansas and sweeping white folks houses to come to Las Vegas or Henderson rather to sweep that plant. Mm. So she uh, created a ruckus and they still hired her and they put her to work in the office. Really? Yes, and that's documented. She must have been the only yeah. one. A, documented yeah. in a story that was done uh, by, I don't know if Mr. Fitzgerald wrote the story, but mm -hmm. it was in the Las Vegas Sentinel Voice. Mm -hmm. oh. But uh, Was she the now, only black? I'm assuming so. Yeah. Uh, if mm -hmm. I find that article, that that's very telling. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to say is that when they came here, they lived at Carver Park mm -hmm. because that was the area right. that was relegated right. to black people. Mm -hmm. right. And as you've already stated, no blacks worked at Boulder Dam. Now, well, our eighth grade teacher, Mr. Uh, Henry Moore, was a scientist, and he came to Las Vegas, rather to Boulder City, to be a scientist at the dam, mm. and they would not allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as a result, he wound up. It was to our benefit. It he was. wound up being one of the best oh teachers that we've ever at had. West Side yeah. School yeah. and at yeah. Madison yeah. School. Yeah, he was awesome. That's yeah. ever yes. uh, yeah. been. Yeah, yeah. I've but heard about Mr. Moore. Yeah, his I heard wife. he used to yell at those kids. Oh yes, he did. He'd oh, yell yeah. so the spit would come out his mouth. The kids were just wiping it off. Stutter. Yeah. Everyone he he tutored, and everyone was under him was successful. Yes. Well, they graduated. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And they, they instilled that yeah. in Absolutely. you. And as a matter of fact, I'm writing a book, not as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. It is a 
point. Um, I'm writing a book, not myself, but uh -huh. it's a, a, a compilation of stories from individuals who went, attended West Side School. That was the mm -hmm. first, uh, the West Side School was the, the West Side School right. was the first school. However, a lot of people think that West Side School was built for black people. It right. was not. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, that school started, it was built in 1922. First classes were in 1923. Those classes uh, uh, had uh, whites, Mexicans, and Native Paiute Americans. Indians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that is basically uh, who the school was built for. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Helen J. Stewart donated the land for that school. There were blacks allowed in it, the kids? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. That's From absolutely. the very beginning? Yes, yeah. okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And that goes back mm -hmm. to a history of Nevada in education and back into the 1800s when Nevada did not, well, I won't go into the part where Nevada and, and the segregation part, mm -hmm. but they did not want, they wanted blacks to have an education. It was okay, but they did not want them to have an education in the same classrooms as whites. And so oh, that's okay. kind of where it starts off, but that's another story. But what I was gonna say in relationship to the people coming from Arkansas, I've read many stories about people coming from Ar uh, Fordyce, Arkansas, where I was born, and from Tallulah, Louisiana. Well, that is true, but in my research, mm -hmm. I have found that <coughs> a lot of people did not come directly to Las Vegas. Most people went directly to McNary, Arizona. Right, right. because yeah, that's yeah. where my mother saw yeah. yeah. there. Right, right. Yeah. And right. they were accustomed to doing those the types of jobs, right. but then yeah. they were uh, uh, given opportunities. They heard about the opportunities here at Basic Magnesium and better housing because the government put up the housing or the little shanties out there mm -hmm. for black people to live in. You couldn't live anywhere else in Henderson. So they came because they were able to make more money mm -hmm. and also they had a better place to live. Mm -hmm. And then subsequently they started migrating to the west side because they were able to purchase land. Mm -hmm. They had uh, attained a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. Land was what everybody wanted to own and that's where they started. And now they, didn't, my they weren't opposed to that because no. they wanted you to on that stay side, on that side. On that mm -hmm. side. Right. And I've, uh, we've accumulated, West Side School Alumni Foundation, we've ac accumulated over 80 stories from people who attended that school with the uh, person that attended last, I mean most, the earliest was mm -hmm. 1928. Wow. And her story is very interesting. Wow, that is amazing. The oldest teacher that we've interviewed, and we have her story, is 97 years wow, old. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And, yeah, that's uh, another it, story it, it, and it, panel. It, there yeah. are so many stories that are gonna come out in this book Good. about people and what they experienced, mm -hmm. uh, that that's gonna be a history book in itself. Through it started story. out being a fun project, mm -hmm. and it has just developed into oh, wow. a real his history book and, and we should be published. We, we're gonna go to publishing probably in two weeks mm -hmm. oh. and the book should be uh, on the shelves in about six months. Well, that's good. Well, yes, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll be uh, hearing yeah. more oh, about yeah, this yeah, some yeah. in some yeah. form exactly. or fashion. But anyway, and Miss, Miss, Miss Hannah Brown, your yeah. family came here in 1944. In 44. Yes, right. and, and as, as Brenda and Jackie have, have indicated, uh, I guess everybody went by way of Arizona mm -hmm. because my mom left Arizona, uh, left Arkansas when I was a year old with my sister and I and moved to McNary, Arizona. And I guess it was just too difficult for her to maneuver with two little kids. So she sent us back to my grandparents for a couple years and then she migrated to Las Vegas. She actually came here to work in the pantry at the uh, El Rancho Vegas. Oh. And uh, a year later, she, uh, she returned to Arkansas and, and brought us here. But um, she, I can remember when the only two hotels on the Strip was the El Rancho Vegas and the Old Frontier. Oh, right. when that, where is now the El Rancho yeah. Vegas? It, is where it that was, vacant is, lot what's happening now there? It, there's nothing there. There's it's nothing the only there. vacant no. lot yeah, on but the Strip. Isn't it near? It's right across the street from the Sahara. Sahara Hotel. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And right. it's uh, it's been vacant since they tore down uh, the El Rancho Vegas. You tell people that, and they go, "You mean they didn't have?" I said, "No. I've been here long <laughs> enough to watch them build all right. the hotels right. one time, 
tear them down and right. build them again. Right. You know, we have no history, unfortunately. No, unfortunately, that's, that's why we're yeah. doing this panel yeah. discussion. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like as yeah. quick as they can. Uh -huh. It's almost like I used to yeah. think, are they just tearing everything down to I, get rid of whatever they're yeah, trying to? Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah, just don't value. Uh, yeah. Apparently, we have no yeah. value for our history. Uh, that's what I. It, but, it's a shame uh, because yeah. that's the first place when I go to see. The first thing I want to do is go to the old areas or the right. or the museums or yeah. it, because to mm -hmm. me it enhances the city's image even oh, more absolutely. Mm -hmm. right you know, so i actually really 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 have a problem a beef mm -hmm. about that with las vegas right the yeah. city in its own because i i find very little yeah. and it's so actually to me the stories that that we'll be discussing here is much more uh, enticing than the ones that they constantly are repeating right. which is mostly the mobsters and the entertainment right. mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was people not all bad, though, those. because they provided jobs for us. So exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. And again, yeah. this is what but I'm saying. This yeah. is these are the your families, mm -hmm. yeah. friends, and we're behind uh, many of these well-known uh, right. artists and, and, right. and entertainers. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. It, it was uh, it was interesting uh, growing up here, and I know we all have different memories of where we were as as a child, but. Uh, my my memory obviously is Second Baptist Church, which yes. is uh, you know one of the oldest, oldest Baptist churches West here. I think yeah. Je Reverend Jesse on the Jackson West side. calls it the miracle yeah. of uh, on, Madison on Madison Street. Street. Yeah. yeah, and you know because my that was my mom's life. She was a uh, church clerk there uh -huh. for many years. Taught our little Sunday school class for 45 years. So everybody that wow. went through Second Baptist mm -hmm. went through her class. You know, mm -hmm. but. It was, uh, you know, and, and, and of course my memory is of, of West Side School uh -huh. because uh, that was our life really. When we were kids, you know, we went from home to church and then school was our life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was, uh, so we don't remember anything other than being on the West Side and West Side School. Now I, I have um, very little memory of any of, of our black families living downtown. Of course, I've mm -hmm. heard the same things that that uh, that we've discussed mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But by the time my mother got here in 1944, we came in 1945. I have uh, very little. I remember one black family being on Stewart, mm -hmm. and other than that, uh, we were all on the West Side by then. And I I was on a panel um, not too long ago with. Uh, Thalia Dondero and Judge uh, George Lloyd. Uh -huh. And we were talking about living in segregated Las Vegas. And it was too funny because they were talking about their little school jobs and everything. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't have anything to do with segregated Las Vegas. We'll talk about living on the west side. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was really funny because at the end of the show, they turned around and looked at me and said, Hannah, we didn't know because I was giving them incidents of uh, how when we went downtown, we knew that we had, uh, you rode the bus, right. mm -hmm. yeah. and we knew that before dark, you were back on the west side. You took a bus and you were back on the west side. And, and they, yeah, and we walked too, yeah. Oh, that was right. fun, especially <laughs> if you had another kid with you. you <laughs> right, know. right. Yeah. But uh, they were saying, well, how did you know you were supposed to when your parents protected you? You knew uh -huh. what the rules were, and right. then you knew you had to be in the house before dark. Because right. the same attitude back in the south Exactly. It, it was no different. It, it was, it no was, different. It was no like right. because I, 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 we, as as was indicated earlier, everybody here was from Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Right. Right. So you know the um, and a lot most of the whites were from from the South as well. That's so right. they brought their same habits with Correct. them. And of course, we accepted them. We sat on the back of the bus. We mm -hmm, paid the mm -hmm. same bus fare, but we still we sat on the back of the bus. Yeah. And, and it's it, you know I, I you know you talk about first and and uh, different. You go into different history. Mm -hmm. And I was the the first. Uh, female and the first minority to work on the Las Vegas ticket counter wow. as a as a um, supervisor for a major airline okay. and then wow that was years ago in the in the 70s so you can accept that but then when I came back home mm. I was the first African-American to be hired as a manager at McCarran Airport in 1995. That's a that's shame. A shame. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a shame. And I'm going to talk to you more yes. about even just that first interview. I cannot wait to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to ask Mr. Washington yeah. before we go to uh, basically the growth. Um, your family came here in the 
1954. 54, mm -hmm. right. See, they would be they would be known to yeah. most of the pioneers today as the babies yes. of the yes. group, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And, and you came from? Mm -hmm. Dale High, Louisiana. Dale High. 20 miles. 20 west, miles from Toulouse. West of <laughs> oh, <laughs> Toulouse, yes. A little help here. And <laughs> I will tell you that my fi folks came here for work like everyone else did. Mm -hmm. And my dad worked at the test site for a few years, but uh, my Isn't recollection area, of known as area, area 51. I would imagine, imagine. somewhere up there, mm -hmm. but certainly mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's where he worked. Mm -hmm. and came here with three boys, uh, myself being mm -hmm. the middle and second child, and mother and father had four girls here in Las Vegas, but mm -hmm. we all uh, successfully attended school here in Las Vegas, and all of us, I believe everyone graduated <coughs> or got a GED like myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And <coughs> there was a lot of things that, that went on, certainly, back in the day that I didn't really sense or pick up the racism, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, is when I was inducted as a, as a draftee into the military in 1971 that I started reading stuff about what was occurring really? to the Sammy Davises going through the back door. I'm like, what? I lived uh, there. Uh, but I was so, yeah. I just wasn't in oh, tune yeah. to it as a, as a young person. It yeah. just didn't, didn't move me. I, everything was just okay. Well, it was yeah. most of your life, though, on the west side because at that time they had everything you needed, right? Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no yeah. reason to exactly. even really leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everything was there. In fact, yeah. uh, we hear people being a little bit perturbed about Mexicans in, in our community. Mexicans was always there. And they yeah, were I remember of my there was a Mexican uh, yeah. store. Yes. On, yes. Was it Mac Williams or somewhere? Yeah. But they've always been around. Yeah. We've always pretty much gotten along. But. Uh, and with regards to West Side School, Brenda had to correct me because I thought I was one of the ones held back because I actually graduated. My class by age should have been class of 1969. Mm -hmm. yeah, we my all class was 70. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I found out, I think it had to do with my age, age. where I was, mm -mm. the time of my birthday that caused me right. to be what I thought no, held back. They put all <coughs> of us back, no. though, when we right. came from, uh, from the uh, South. Uh, Did they the hold you back? All Why? Of them, Why? But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Actually, some of the stories, and I don't want to give away anything in, in the book, uh, about the book, but a lot of it had to do with being from down south. Mm -hmm. They were only, uh, you were passed along if you finished the first primer. Well, in Las Vegas, you were finished, after you finished the third primer, were you right. passed. Right. You could not just, you know, get the very, very basics. Mm -hmm. You right. had to be proficient at certain levels mm -hmm. before you passed. And so if you came into Las Vegas and you only had that one proficiency, mm -hmm. then you were put back so mm -hmm. that you could complete that so that you were able to compete. But it was a way mm -hmm. to set you up because they yeah. knew well, you didn't have that. It, well, <coughs> yeah. Yes. They, they, they yes. knew that you wouldn't have that. Yes. Yeah, because exactly. see, I was in the kindergarten, not, so I wait, mean, they, they held us where we were. Right. You know, I, and, I was and never was, held back, yeah. and, and neither yeah. was my sister. Uh -huh. yeah. So that was perhaps a way, but when you think about s just some of the stories that I've read, thus far for the book, people came, they had not been to school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can't very well go to second grade mm -hmm. if, if you've you never had school. a, you right. know, you don't know your ABCs, right. you don't right. know. Right. So in eighth grade, as one of uh, the storytellers relates, in his eighth grade class, he had 17 and 18 year old people. Wow, there. really? Yes, yes. because really? they had not been to school because they had to they work had in to the field. <laughs> uh, they <laughs> lived so far away from yeah. the school mm -hmm. that they couldn't get there. So mm -hmm. I, I really can't say it's all a setup. I think uh, overall, everybody who's, who stated that they mm -hmm. were put back, they don't have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I think do it was a setup. I think it was policy mm -hmm. because as Brenda had said, a lot of the children that came from the South were behind and and they did hold <coughs> you uh they they held i know i graduated a year late mm -hmm. also uh -huh. and they wanted because they wanted to put me up but uh i had an older sister that they didn't want to put up and my mother didn't didn't agree with moving right. me and not moving her. Right. And so, yeah. Miss Bryan, Bryan, you have a, I know Ms. you're Bryan. just I sitting on something. Oh, I can't wait to hear My thoughts is a little different from yours. Mm -hmm. It seems like the system was mm -hmm. designed to keep the black child back. I brought my children out here too. Right. Mm -hmm. Mrs. French put you through 
the low first, yeah, and then mm -hmm. the high first. That's right. Your daughter said what? That's right. My daughter, Penny, who went mm -hmm. to school mm -hmm. with you, listen, Penny came, put all readers, print, write, mm -hmm. read, do all that, because I right. had taught her at home. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what she told my daughter? You are not allowed to write. You are too young. You hmm. must go back to print. Well, she she was, would not let her. She was a case. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Miss, Miss, Miss okay. French, yeah. it seemed like that system was designed, keep that black child back. Mm -hmm. You keep a child back long mm -hmm. enough, he's going to drop out of school. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. So then it was the, as far as I'm concerned, it was the system designed mm -hmm. because we were really segregated in West Las Vegas, and it was really a different in our schools than it was in the right, right they school. had very low yeah. expectations I, you know, of us. Exactly. Exactly. And that, uh, that Mr. was yeah. on that there are yeah. <clears throat> there are people who have written stories like what you're describing and then there. people who have written them to the contrary right mm -hmm. so right. we're not asking for the good which is interesting it is it's we the, want it to know, we want yeah. it to be but the there yeah. we yeah. want yeah. their which is, yeah. experiences right. to come there. out right mm -hmm. otherwise history is defeated well, that's what history by telling is. it the way somebody else wants right. well, it history? or the way somebody yeah. else perceived it right well, well history I, I think they just had low expectations of us because i gotta tell you i've had people ask me well what was it like transitioning from uh, <coughs> a segregated Pardon school me. to an integrated school? And I went to Rancho High. The first year Rancho was, uh, was mm -hmm. organized. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it wasn't too difficult for me. I was student body secretary after <laughs> the, the <f> first <laughs> semester. And then I, was, I stayed on the state, straight A honor roll, so I had no problem with it. But I, I think that they just had low expectations of us. That's, that's and basically, if you didn't uh, have the ability to achieve, you didn't get the support that you needed mm -hmm. in, in a lot of cases. And you yeah. might and that, think and about a lot of the, the fact parents that the, didn't the know teachers. either. You know, my, right. my, my mother was, you know, in your face, but a, a right. lot of the parents didn't too. know right. either. Right. So there. that was, right. and that, you, yeah. that, I've always they been weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. They I weren't there. able to oh, help. Oh, yeah, you were there. They're They're all the time. Time. I'd like to say that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, now that we're talking about education, that's really one of my love. Mm -hmm. Right. My, when my mother came to Las Vegas in 1939, mm -hmm. she already had a college degree. Mm -hmm. She received yeah. her degree, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. she, she, re she graduated at 19 mm -hmm. from, um, Alabama State at Montgomery. Mm. Wow. And we hear a lot of things about the march in Montgomery mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Alabama and, you know, the wonderful things that happened in Arkansas. And I'm just recently mm -hmm. inspired by Daisy Gates, uh, Bates, and all of mm -hmm. these wonderful right, people right. Mm -hmm. that came before us in mm -hmm. that generation. Mm -hmm. But my mother was educated already. Mm -hmm. And she could not, and, she, and of course her degree was in education. Mm -hmm. She couldn't get a job as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So she started working in the clubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when she did start back uh, at UNLV, it was called Nevada Southern University right, back was, in the right. 50s, and they were yeah. housed at Las Vegas High School. Right. She was <coughs> one of the first blacks to attend UNLV. It was called Tumbleweed Tech, but it was before they had built uh, Maude Frazier Hall. Mm -hmm. right. And she remembers uh, applying for a position with the school district, and she was uh, speaking of all of the superintendents and all these names really flew around in my head, but she talked about um, the, the two years of study that she had at um, Alabama State. Now I have her degree at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they allowed her to teach a substitute much later, but she, it took her 15 years wow. to do two years wow. at UNLV to get her teaching degree, wow. but she taught for 20 years after <laughs> that. Right. Right. And, but, th but that just goes to show you the, the pride that came from right. the southern states, right. even though right. they said mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. people that came here, right. many of them were already <laughs> educated. Well, they were. Many right. of them already <coughs> had a college <coughs> degree and had yeah. experience teaching, mm -hmm. but yeah. they did not get the opportunity once they arrived right. here. Right. So my hat is off to a lot of the people that came before us who really invested mm -hmm. a lot of time in education, mm -hmm. and they had so many wonderful stories to bring to us as children growing up, and mm -hmm. we could not fail because we had to walk on their shoulders, and they right. would yeah. not allow wow. us yeah. to not have the courage and to mm -hmm. get that, uh, to strive for a higher education mm -hmm. here in Las Vegas. And, mm -hmm. and you know what, and that brings me to a point of, you know, all of the things that, all of these stories that I'm hearing, mm -hmm. how no one 
really sat, gave up, uh, right. and continued mm -hmm. to persevere, exactly. except yeah. the understood Jim Crow uh, rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dave, I want to get you in here because I know you, you're way outnumbered here. Yeah, so. you <laughs> got too many. We're going to piggyback on something. Wait, wait. Before. Yeah, well, hold on yeah. one second. I want to just talk about how, you know, like you didn't know about the sex, but basically they got together, made their own strip. Black Strip, known as Jackson Street, right. really yeah. had their own hotel, casinos, yeah, absolutely. all had the license of clubs, and I'm sure you 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 enjoyed most of it, or especially your family, because well, I was too young. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> 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 let me finish well, though. Know, I, 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 I did I, I did go down on Jackson hear. Street. Yes, I went down okay. on Jackson Street. Remember Larry's Music Bar right, right there, well, right. and several <laughs> other, <laughs> and <step Okay>. right. <laughs> several other, several other establishments yeah. down on Jackson Street, mm -hmm. bowling alleys and such. Yeah. Like you said, everything that we needed was right in our community. Yeah. But if I could just backtrack on education real quick, I got my basic foundation of education: kindergarten through sixth grade. After that, I took a nosedive, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I think some of the stuff that Miss Brian brought up was. Yeah. I kind of mm -hmm. accepted being, you know, the stereotypical black person, black boy. You ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna make nothing of your life. So just uh -huh. sit over there in that mm -hmm. corner. Mm -hmm. And the teachers didn't didn't inspire me like a Miss Charlotte Cooks, mm -hmm. who was always pushing oh, you. Michelle. Oh, you gonna yeah. be somebody? Oh, you, yeah. Yeah. And she'd bush you across your knuckles <laughs> with, that, yeah. with that ruler and make <laughs> you yeah. pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. And those kinds he, of he things were more Mr. inspiring Moore than than than, yeah. than, yeah. than <laughs> what happened later on in school because once again. I feel, and I don't brag about this, it's just a fact. I feel English from the seventh grade mm -hmm. till I got kicked out in the eleventh grade. Mm -hmm. They told me, you just get out. I had a job at Caesars Palace. They figured, you know, you just want to work anyway, so yeah. you don't need to come to school. You're not mm -hmm. paying attention. Uh -huh. and you're not doing what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do, so Brian Cram, and me and him laughed about this years later. Wow, that's uh -huh. amazing. He told I didn't me, know that you know, about you. Okay. sit there as a dean of students at Clark and told my mother, your son don't want to go to school, and we just going to put him on out. Mm -hmm. My mother, with a third eighth grade education. My father, I think, they're both deceased now. I had a third grade education. Didn't really push me. Right. They were divorced at they the time, know. but mm -hmm. yeah. they didn't know. No. Just went along with the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. But thanks to God, yeah. all glory to God, yeah. Yeah. I got my GED. Yeah. I, I bought the book and I got my GED the same year that my class graduated. Ni they oh, graduated wow. in June of 1970. Hey. Oh, right. I got my GED in October mm -hmm. of 19. Wow. Termination. Yeah. So, right. but, but, but again, that's back from the push <laughs> yeah. of the Miss yeah. Charlotte Cooks and mm -hmm. others who, yes, I didn't uh -huh. have Mr. Moore, right. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yeah. Yeah. Had I had them, oh, I would have been a, like a Ray Feast. I'd have been yeah. very, very much better with my hands, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, as he is. Yeah, but Ray is the, yeah. nobody pushed yeah. me. There was no mm -hmm. uh, yes. school for trades at that time, in fact. Votech came up as I was transitioning out of school, that. but that's the kind of stuff that I really, really needed. Uh -huh. But with the Jim Crow stuff, again, I didn't understand or appreciate. I think when we went to the movies, mm -hmm. paying that 10 or 25 cents, sitting up, I didn't even realize we were being discriminated. We were sitting upstairs. <laughs> they didn't either I didn't until know. they you just know, didn't realize just, they were the know, best yeah. seats. Remember, they <laughs> moved us downstairs. Once again, <laughs> this stuff they just, didn't it, it really didn't move me yeah, because right, right. this was just the accepted practice. Right. Yeah. yeah. But again, so once I went right. to the military as a draftee, mm. I started getting very, very angry mm -hmm. as I read about stuff in Jet, Jet Magazine, Ebony Magazine, about the things that were occurring to high-profile blacks <coughs> in our community. Absolutely. I'm like, what? I live there. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. We had, and, and, and we it was very upsetting, but right. again, mm -hmm. and I guess that's where my, my radical, my militant, I've been called all those names, uh, uh, start to, to, to percolate in my gut when mm -hmm. I came back mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. because again I got out with an honorable discharge yeah. no one absolutely no one gonna kick sand in my face mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't go to Vietnam I tell folks all the time you better be glad I didn't go to Vietnam actually get shot at I got shot right in the community still got shotgun pellets mm -hmm. in my face Wow! not far from your house yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's <coughs> right, you know, yeah. but see, that just brings to the point of you, like you say, you do get angry, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so much of my determination to know about the history is because of the Nat King Coles who can mm -hmm. headline down mm -hmm. on a strip mm -hmm. and then have to live in a little, little, you know, in, little in renting room, a rooming room, house. Mm -hmm. a rooming and, house and, but it was good on the West Side. Kids because, I, you know, I got to meet him. Well, right. Because <laughs> basically, you know, what we would do, you, we always knew when, when the big entertainers were coming, and we would walk with me being on Monroe and the rooming house being on, uh, you know, just a couple blocks up. Mm -hmm. We would walk past that rooming house time mm -hmm. after time <laughs> until we finally saw him outside. Mm -hmm. He was a very gracious man. He'd come to the fence 
and talk to us and say, mm -hmm. well, how are you doing in school? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, mm -hmm. and of course, you're always happy to tell him you're on the honor roll. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then when he was coming back, uh, then uh, we'd walk up and down and up and down, and I just happened to have my report card in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> just happened to have it. Just happened to have it, right? But he was just the nicest man, mm -hmm. and he re and and he remembered you. And with a name like Hannah back then, yeah. you, there was no one named Hannah. Mm -hmm. So when I started working for Larry mm -hmm. and Larry's mm -hmm. Music Bar. Mm -hmm. He would go next door to the barber shop and get his shoes shined and, and his hair done. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day he was asking, he s I, I went, I knew he was next door, you mm -hmm. know, because the west side was this big. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, of course, the, the soda machine was in the barber shop, so of course I had to have a soda. Mm -hmm. And I went over, put my little money in the soda machine, and I walked over to him and I said, you don't remember me. I said, uh, my name, no, I said, I said something to him about I had met him at the rooming house and he said, and I said, and I brought my report card, I said, and I started to say, my name is Hannah. He said, you're Hannah. Mm -hmm. And he remembered my name, right. but you know, yeah. and you know, but then you didn't meet anybody named Hannah. So, it, right. you know, but I, you know, that memory is so etched in my mind mm -hmm. because as far as I'm concerned, he is the nicest man yeah. I've ever met. Now the segregation yeah. in Las Vegas ended uh, 1960. There was a mm. potential protest march, mm. uh, according to uh, the front page mm -hmm. news, yeah. Las Vegas Sun, mm -hmm. uh, color barriers uh, end in the hotels and yeah. casinos. Yeah. So, I know everyone's laughing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was just words. The law right. was the fine. Words. The, yeah, right. So <laughs> then now Nat, the Nat King Coles now yeah. can stay in the casinos. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pearl Baileys can stay in the casinos. Was it really a major shift? And if it was, when did you really see a big change as far as the attitude? It was towards? years later because we could go out. You know, you, you could go out. And uh, I can remember sitting through lounge shows where they'd wait until the show was over and then they'd come throw a napkin in front of you and ask you if they could take your order. Mm -hmm. you know, so so it was years later. What about you, Miss Bryant? Did mm -hmm. you, you working in the hotels, did you yeah. see a major? Not in the 60s, no. 70s, Probably. 80s? <laughs> <laughs> later on in the, the later years of right. 60, you could kind of see a little change. Yeah. One thing I do remember was when they, said that we were able to go now you can go in and sit down and see a show and enjoy yourself we start just going every weekend because we wanted to <laughs> see all those people mm -hmm. that we had not seen mm -hmm. in you know performing on stage we just go to shows after shows after shows finally it was just like any other thing because on in west las vegas we were having shows and dances yeah. and things yeah, like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those things. So it was just like right. Right. another yeah. thing. Yeah. My thing was uh, when they started uh, treating you better at the hotels and things where you worked at, you know, because that when we first started working at those hotels, we could have gotten other jobs, but the only jobs they would give you when you first came here was uh, washing dishes and making up beds and uh, cooks and things like that. But, you know, uh, when the integration started coming. At first, at the hotels where you worked at, there, the, you could not sit in the Hep's cafeteria and eat along with the white workers mm. there. Mm -hmm. you, did, uh, you, you didn't have places uh, uh, to sit and eat. And so you had to bring your little paper bag, bag lunch like from uh -huh, home, uh -huh. you know, but wow. we, we, we kind of, we got smart and we brought a hot plate <laughs> and then we could cook uh, in the locker room. <laughs> We'd had beans and peas smelling and going on then. Now, yeah, after integration in the hotels and things, you yeah, were able to we come really into the, the Hep's cafeteria, into mm -hmm. the lounges and things, and sit there and, you know, and enjoy your lunch and everything. But the, and, and, um, they would put one person, for instance, the, I remember the first black cocktail waitress that they put at the Stardust Hotel. One and every on every shift or something like one, that. Uh -huh. Just one. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. they would put one person there and they started letting you get, you know, different higher positions and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. You could, uh, you know, the first we didn't have any PBX operators and things like, mm -hmm. they were all white, you would still stick mm -hmm. one in there. Stick one, one of everything. One of they everything. Would start, they would mm -hmm. ease it on into it. Right. So mm -hmm. it was years later before I could see a lot of change. Right, because yeah, even wow. in 1964, yeah. um, 
uh, Dr. Uh, William Bailey still asked uh -huh. his college partner, uh, Dr. <coughs> Martin Luther King, uh -huh. he still needed to come out here mm -hmm. and yeah. try to help. Mm -hmm. And he no, did in 64, mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. out here, mm -hmm. met with Governor Sawyer, mm -hmm. did a speech at mm -hmm. the convention center. Yes. Because mm -hmm. even he saw going through the hotels, mm -hmm. it, it just, no there was no one there. Mm -hmm. There's no one on the yeah, floor, no, no blacks. Oh, no, it wasn't a big difference. No matter no. what, right. Wasn't a big difference. Right. Right. Yeah, so. Church, um, my mother worked at the Desert Inn Hotel as a maid. And later she became a powder room maid, which was the ultimate oh, that was a big yeah. position. Oh, yeah. you know, I have an aunt as, who was a as a maid. Yeah. Right. And uh, she worked at uh, Desert Inn mm -hmm. for many years while she went to school at Dana McKay Business School. But in doing working there, she was friends with Mrs. Uh, oh, what was his name? The Wilbur owner, Clark. Wilbur Clark. Tony Clark. Tony yeah. Clark. Tony Clark. Mm -hmm. Clark. She was mm -hmm. friends with Tony Clark. And they would allow my sister, myself, to come to the hotel in the showroom. In the back, there was a booth, and we would be able to sit back there, and this was way before the uh, 60s, to watch black performers. And my mother would, that was only because she was friends with Tony Clark. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's Tony Clark coming in and out of the, uh, the powder room, mm -hmm. or babysitting somebody's kid while in the powder room while they were at the show. So this was one of the little kudos that uh, they would give her. But as far as now, the only other time that I can remember blacks being uh, invited to the hotels <coughs> were in the late 50s when they always had a Christmas party. Oh yeah, And all exactly. the little kids yeah, from yeah. the west side, uh -huh. the, uh, yeah. uh, the yeah. employees, family mm -hmm. exactly. were yeah. invited to the Christmas party. Yeah. This is a yeah. big, big deal. deal. Mm -hmm. I yeah. actually have an invitation that was mm -hmm. sent out, I was looking at it the other night, really? where yeah. uh, it would say, you are invited and you put your name in there, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. to uh -huh. the Christmas party and yeah. it was, uh, but this was, wasn't an integrated thing. Uh -huh. This was strictly As segregated. Yeah. Segregated. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I just want to yeah. say one thing about that education point we were making about um, the prejudices that was there. You know, all of the teachers at West Side School weren't educated. Okay, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. have to take those things into consideration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they brought their prejudices with their ignorance. Exactly to the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we have one lady who was so dedicated as a teacher and well qualified. Mm -hmm. She came here to teach with her husband. He, I forgot what he does, but anyway, her name is Miss Agnes Lockett. Yeah, I love okay? it. Okay, Miss it. Agnes yeah. Lockett <laughs> drove every day for 15 years from Boulder, Boulder City, City to the West wow. Side School to teach <coughs> because she was not allowed to teach mm -hmm. at West Side School. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to mention her name in a meeting with uh, the archivist over at Nevada State Museum last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh my gosh, Brenda, he said, they were our neighbors, we knew them. They uh, went, that family, the Lockett family, went through so much, mm -hmm. wow. so mm -hmm. much prejudice. He said, it was just shameful, mm -hmm. very, very shameful. Mm -hmm. But I say that to say that this is probably why un when we had uneducated teachers, one, one of the um, alumni told me that one of the teachers actually babysat and also worked as a waitress down town at, I think it was the city drugstore mm -hmm. down on f off of Fremont and Third or Fremont and Fourth. Mm -hmm. So she was just coming in as a waitress, you know, I guess, it was like, well, they don't know nothing anyway, so right. yeah, mm -hmm. right. you know, anything will mm -hmm. do. Right. But of course, Miss French had uh, mm -hmm. uh, a degree, as did uh, others that came mm -hmm. after well, she, her. She had her own but way of doing things too, you oh, know. Oh, absolutely. But then but we I, I experienced just Mabel out Hogarth, the and, and, that and then you we know, had ignorant people so they were involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, correct the record. Yeah. That's now, that's Hannah, yeah. I, uh, Miss Miss Brown, my mother would kill me if she knew I called you Hannah. <laughs> but but that's my name. <laughs> that's your yeah. name. Okay. Yeah. So okay. There you go. Thank you for for clearing that up for me. Okay. But I want to touch upon most of all of your own historic. Uh, mm -hmm. moments that you've had in your own mm -hmm. personal lives. Uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Brown, you became the first, uh, like you said, the attendant for an airline. The first regional. Uh, can you just, yeah. can you just be briefly, in each of you, briefly, can you just tell me 
What did that feel like to either apply for it or when you went into No, I, I started uh, with, with Western Airlines as a reservations agent, you know, because obviously back, you know, at my age, you started entry level. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I answered the phone uh, for, uh, gosh, about just a few months. And I got, you know, it, it was a job you could learn pretty fast if mm -hmm. you were paying attention. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I got bored, so I went to my manager and I said, gosh, is there anything else I can do? <laughs> because, you know, I'm here eight hours and mm -hmm. I didn't want to see, you know, if you're busy, the time passes if you didn't. But anyway, mm -hmm. I learned to work in all the little different positions in the reservations office. And he said, well, uh, we had a, 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 a PBX board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he, the, he told Dixie Frist was our PBX operator, he asked her, to teach me to relieve her. And she said, I guess she froze later, I was told, she said, uh, on the switchboard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so, really? So that <coughs> was that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, okay. and so I, I, he transferred, and so later I was able to transfer to the, uh, what we call the city ticket offices. We had offices that so each nobody, of the... What was the feel, the climate? The, just uh, the, oh, it was... Uh, it was okay, or... Actually, it or was, you don't pay attention to that? Uh, no, some of that, you knew that they were there, but after a while, though, I gotta tell you, you kind of got to the point that, that you took what you wanted to take, and like, like uh, David has said, pretty soon they knew how far to go with you, too, right. you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, I'm kind of strong. But right. anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but I, you know, we went to, you, know, you go through a lot of changes. When <coughs> I went to the ticket office, we had a union uh, with Western, so the only requirement to get promoted was to be able to, was to have the most seniority. You didn't mm -hmm. have to chew gum, walk at the same time, just have the most seniority. seniority okay. Well, they posted a shift, uh, a supervisor shift, and I, I put in a bid for it, and they made me take a test. Mm -hmm. They'd never done. Nobody They'd never had done that. So you knew that test. was that was yeah. You knew that was so coming. What? Or something actually, was coming. Actually, I was kind of surprised. Really? But, you know, I, but I took the. Yeah, obviously, I passed the test. Mm -hmm. And when so I the went to the. the rest is history. Uh, but no, when I went to the airport. Right. Uh, they closed the ticket offices. I went to the airport. They posted supervisor shifts, and I I put in a bid for one. Mm -hmm. And the assistant manager said, you know, you I want to tell you something. If you uh, displace <coughs> one of these guys, you better damn well be able to do his job. Well, mm -hmm. I have a small child, and I'm a single parent, mm -hmm. so I couldn't afford to lose my job. I pulled my bid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was so upset with myself after that. They posted one a couple months later, which okay. was a better position. Mm -hmm. And guess and what? Uh, they made me take another test. Uh, Okay. okay. They created one. They created but one just for you to take it. But you can believe that until <coughs> Delta bought us in 1987, everybody that went into supervision took that doggone test. Okay. But That's and right. then when I after that, I went. Uh, I was promoted to um, an assistant manager. But by then, right. you're with the same you're company. The same company. They know your work history. Right. So they were offering me jobs. Okay. And then when my daughter was in college, I, I accepted a position in San Francisco. And from then on, the rest is history because okay. you get promoted to the corporate office based on your uh, performance. Okay, let me brief. I only have three more minutes left. God, does that go by fast? Oh, yeah. yeah. Too fast. <laughs> Dave, uh, and this is something I didn't even know about you. I'm finding this out, knowing mm -hmm. you all my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to know, just, just, just in, in 17 words or, or less, you becoming the first black fire department chief for the city of for Las the Vegas. city of Las Vegas. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Well, it was it was an honor, but first of all, I do not accept that that all the accolades without mentioning Monroe Williams, right? James Walker, Larry Powell, that, Otis Harris. That paved the Those way. Those guys came within six months. Period. They were the trailblazers. All the hell they caught, it made it much right. easier. So for when you even came, though I was not that. quite accepted, right? Mm -hmm. Not at first as a Black man, right, I understand. I know it is hard yeah. to say first because we are all standing on somebody's uh, shoulder. Yeah. And, and yeah. Jackie, you were you had the the yeah. wonderful yeah. opportunity yeah. to work yeah. for Governor, uh, the former the Governor, former Superintendent of Kenny School, Quinn, the late Kenny, Kenny C. Quinn. Quinn. It yes. was my honor to work as his Director of Constituent oh. Services. Actually, yeah. he appointed me to that position, but I had worked with him at the school district from 1966 through 1974. Mm -hmm. And I also was the first black person to work in a setting where we designed the integration program, my boss and I. And wow. uh, he, he followed my career from the school district 
through the Department of Motor Vi from UNLV to the D Department of Motor Vehicles, where I worked for 17 years. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then he appointed yeah. me from that department. And That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I retired from gracefully from, yeah. from <laughs> that department. <laughs> That's beautiful. And, and, busy. <laughs> and so busy. 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. You, uh, uh, you are I, the first two. Well, I actually was the first black ever to work in a bank in other than a custodial or service capacity mm -hmm. in the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. In Las mm -hmm. Vegas, I walked in First National Bank to pay my car note, and that was also my last unemployment check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I looked up at Fifth and Gas and saw that personnel. I walked upstairs and told them I wanted to work mm -hmm. in the bank. And they said, well, you have to take this test. And I took the test, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody takes the test without mm -hmm. the application. Mm -hmm. I took the test and they said, oh, well, you passed the test and fill out the application. So it'll take three weeks to get your background check. Well, I'd been in Las Vegas all of my life, so mm -hmm. it didn't three weeks. Anyway, I went to work for <laughs> the bank uh, as a first. first. That's beautiful. That yeah. is wonderful. And see, so, yeah. and Miss Bryant, <laughs> the shoulders we are standing on, yeah. yes. Yes. I got 15 Praise more seconds. 15. I could not, I oh have to wrap goodness. it up with the Praise the God for 59 pioneer. years there you go. in Las Vegas. 31 of those years I did at the Stardust Hotel as supervisor of uniform. It's a long story and I stayed there because I loved my job. Okay. The only Beautiful. thing I am yes. first in I organized the first softball girls team <laughs> oh, in wonderful. Las Vegas. <coughs> All right. Yeah, that's awesome. but boys yeah. playing softball and baseball. Right. But I organized the first girls softball team in Las Vegas with yeah. North Las Vegas Recreation Center, well, 1982. Well, thank yes. you. Right. That's right. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I can go on and on and on yeah. and talk to all of you, but thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate everyone being here. I hope that everyone has gotten, if anything, out of this panel discussion, an enhancement of the city of Las Vegas image. Thank you, and until later, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.